Sony, there's a name. <laughs> Everybody knows Sony. But no, I don't think too many people think speakers. Yeah, they make some great speakers. Sony speakers, they make headphones, TVs, uh, get nice cameras. They make speakers. Well, of course they do, and they have for pretty much forever. But it's not exactly the name I would jump to when I'm thinking, what kind of speaker am I going to review today? But I'm doing a Sony speaker review today, the SS CS5. Well, because I saw other people had already done it and they really liked it. But the review that caught my eye was from this new YouTube channel. It's called The Finer Things. And they reviewed it and they loved it. They loved it. They just were gushing over this, this little speaker. And it was just something about their enthusiasm that really grabbed me. So I thought, you know, I should get these speakers. So I did. And then I looked around and I saw that some of my other pals have already reviewed it, like Sean at Zero Fidelity. I think he did it in 2018. And Cheap Audio Man, Randy over there, he did it and really, really liked it. So here I am. Here I am. I'm doing it too. Joining the pack. They all liked it, and I do too. I will tip my hand right up front. I don't know if I liked it quite as much as they did, but I certainly liked it enough. First of all, it's a very affordable speaker. And that's part of the story here is, well, this pair that I'm reviewing sells for about $120 a pair in the US. That's good. But when the Finer Things guys did it, I think it was more like $80 a pair. And when Sean did it, it was $150 a pair. So the price is uh, flexible. Let's put it that way. So the price is bouncing around. So when, when after I do this review, Mm, there's a fair chance the price is going to go up again. But in any case, it was $120 when I started working on this review. So first off, the thing that, that you'll notice is that it's a three-way design, but not the usual sort of three-way, which would be woofer, mid-range, tweeter. No, the little Sony speaker, the SSCS5, and I'm just going to call it the Sony speaker. Uh, it has a five-inch mica cellulose woofer and then the tweeter so one inch tweeter and a three quarter inch super tweeter so that's the three ways super tweeter tweeter and woofer round back there's a port and some pretty substantial looking binding posts all in all for 120 dollars nothing nothing embarrassing going on here no sony sony did good but how does it sound that's what you're saying now you might think it's got two tweeters <laughs> going to be bright. No, this speaker is not bright. It's actually very nicely balanced overall. Um, the imaging is, is very clean. The bass is surprisingly full. You, I doubt anybody would really feel, feel compelled to add a subwoofer to this system, at least if it's being used in a small room. And $120 speakers, $120 pair speakers, you shouldn't use them in your mansion. You, know, you shouldn't use them in your giant loft space. No, in, the, in an appropriately sized room, I think the bass is very satisfying. I, ha I had bass going down to 50 hertz or so, which is good. Very good, actually, considering its size and price. Now, I did, I did like the, uh, the Sony's top end. I thought it was very clean. I think I didn't like it quite as much as uh, these other reviews did. I think it's good in the sense that it doesn't call attention to itself. And that's a feat right there in a $120 pair speaker. That's really good. But yeah, let me just talk about some music. So I'm going to just show you all of the CDs that I use uh, in this review rather than talk about them individually. But I will start with the Chris Teeley Brad Meldow disc. So Chris plays mandolin, Brad plays piano, and yeah, first of all, and, and Chris sings, and his vocal, his vocal's very close mic but it sounds good, it sounds natural. Uh, the mandolin uh, delicacy and speed were first rate, actually, and the piano tone was, was good. They, things were uh, firing on all cylinders, no complaints from me. I also played some Mr. Robot, the Max Quail soundtrack album for the deep bass test, and again, for a small speaker, this speaker uh, seems unusually well endowed. I'm going to talk a little bit about Bruce Springsteen. You know, uh, this album, Live in London, 1975, is really good. I think the performances are extraordinary, and actually, 
the sound quality is better than the studio albums of that period. Well, probably of most periods of Bruce, because eh, they're not the best sounding. But anyway, Bruce was at his creative peak for me in 1975. And that's when I saw him in New York City at the his theater called the Academy of Music on 14th Street. And it was one of the greatest concerts I've ever been to. I thought so at the time, <laughs> and I, thought so, I still think so. I think it was one of the peak experiences of my life because Bruce was on fire. He had such incredible charisma from the second he came out on stage to the second he left, which was probably three or four hours later. It was exhilarating to the extreme. And uh, I came home and I played those records to death. But this recording, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Like th it starts with Thunder Road and it's just such a, an epic piece of music and songwriting and performance. And the whole album just feels great and captures that, that energy. I think it's his charisma more than anything is that gets to people. You know, you just see him on stage and it's electric. <laughs> it is phenomenal. And these little Sony speakers, man, they just disappeared and pulled Springsteen back over these uh, 45 years or so and he appeared magically in this space. So that's a pretty huge achievement <laughs> for $120 a pair of speakers. You know, oh, I didn't, I neglected to tell you what was in the rest of the system. So my standard affordable reference uh, integrated amplifier, the Denon PMA600NE, and I was using an Oppo uh, Blu-ray player. The uh, uh, DAC was a shit Bifrost multi-bit. Anyway, so it's a, it's a pretty substantial front end for a review of a $120 speaker, but still, I decided to be fair and treat it well. And you know what? It treated me well too, because the speaker's just, yeah. Definitely pretty, pretty amazing. To put the Sony's uh, strengths in some sort of context, I pulled out a set of Emotiva B1 Plus stand mount speakers. They sell for, I believe, I should have checked, uh, $229 a pair. So they're, uh, they are more expensive, but they're still pretty affordable speakers and they're about the same size. But the Emotivas have a AMT, an air motion transformer, AKA folded ribbon tweeter. And you know what, despite all the accolades that other people have heaped upon the Sony's top end, Emotiva was definitely better. <laughs> Emotiva was even much cleaner, sweeter sounding, even more, uh, uh, less push to it, you know, less forward sounding top end. And the, and the Sony's pretty damn good, but the Emotiva's top end was even better in terms of its naturalness and subtlety. The other thing the Emotiva did better was Bruce's voice and just mid-range in general was, was warmer, more filled out, more body and soul to the sound of vocals, Bruce's and Chris Teeley's and other pieces of music that I played. And I just felt that the, the Emotiva was pretty, um, just a more together sounding speaker. And returning back to the Sony, the Sony sounded forward and a little lean in the middle and, and upper bass and stuff. So, no, I would say, <laughs> I would say as much as I, I respect the Sony, if you have, if you can spend the extra change and get an Emotiva B1 Plus, you should go for it. But it's not really that, it's not really a fair comparison because it is at this price a significantly more expensive speaker. So I can see the Sony as a great, like entry level speaker for young audiophiles. If you're a kid and you're just putting a system together for your bedroom or den or basement or something or, or dorm room, I think the Sony is a very respectable sounding speaker. As for electronics, it would make sense to partner with the Sony. Well, I don't have any super affordable uh, examples at my fingertips, but I would say the Emotiva Base X100, which is $229, uh, that would be a nice, a nice, a nice sandwich. It would be a nice match. Another disc I played was the soundtrack to Mulholland Drive. That's a David Lynch movie. I love David Lynch. I really do. 
I met him uh, in the mid early yeah, early seventies. Uh, he spent some time with me in a projection room. That's a story for another another video. So anyway, this Mulholland Drive's score soundtrack um, is captures that mood of creepiness, of weirdness, of noir, of just like an unsettling vibe. And you know what? These little Sonys definitely communicated that, that, that vibe, that mood, very, very well, very effectively. And yeah, you know, you could use them as TV speakers, and they want, would wind up sounding better than most sound bars. So get that little amp or some decent little amp and pair with it. Hook it up to your TV in whatever way is possible. It's not so easy nowadays. And uh, you'd have a sweet little system for music and for watching movies or TV shows. So yes, I think, I think the little Sony is, is a charmer. Um, my, only, my only regrets <laughs> are as I didn't get to it a lot sooner. But, you know, better late than never. Uh, my name is Steve Guttenberg, and this is, without a doubt, and this isn't too late, this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And if you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. And after you've done that, well, you could also check out the Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. Oh, and then there's the playlist. We have lots of uh, playlists. We, we have playlists for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and electronics reviews and, of course, music reviews, plus interviews, interviews with speaker designers like Andrew Jones and Eric, from, and Eric Benjamin from Tekton, uh, lots of really cool audio industry folk. Dan D'Agostino, formerly of Krell, now of Dan D'Agostino. He's in there, too. That was a fun interview I did with Dan. Anyway, I think, I think, I know, in fact, for a fact, that my work here is at last complete. So thank you again for watching, and I would really love to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.